God, we need your presence, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Save my generation, God. Save my generation, God. Save my generation, God. Brother, you will not have us in the name of Jesus. Brother, you will not have us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Show us your glory, God. Show us your glory, God. God, we hunger and thirst after you, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. God, we thank you, God. God, we thank you for forgiving us of every sin that we've committed, God. God, we thank you for loving us when we messed up, God. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for everything that what you're about to do, Jesus. God, we thank you for the shift right now, God. God, we thank you for the transition right now, God. God, because the enemy thinks he has us, but the devil is a liar. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, young people. Hallelujah, Jesus. Close your eyes and give God some prayer. Glory, God. Close your eyes and give God some glory. Hallelujah. 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 Just fall in love with him. Just fall in love with him. Just fall in love with him. Hallelujah. 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 I was praying on this week and I heard God say, I want you, I want the young people to fall in love with me again. Fall in love with me again, like when your first got saved. Enough of this, enough of this, oh, I'm a Christian, but I'm still going to do the same thing. No, you got to fall in love with God. Hallelujah. It's time to fall in love with God. Hallelujah. 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 The Spirit is sent. Hallelujah. The Spirit is sent. Hallelujah. If you can't turn your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for your spirit, God. God, we thank you for your presence, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Will you have to say amen? 1 Peter 2 and 9. Will you have to say amen? Come on, y'all. Come on. Amen. And it reads, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, yeah, yeah. and a holy nation, yeah. a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness right. into the marvelous light, yeah. which in time past were not a people, oh. but are now people of God, yeah. which are not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Yeah. And then I'm going to read down to verse 11 and 12, and it says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as a stranger and pilgrims, yeah. abstain from fleshly lusts which war against your soul, uh. having your conversation honest against among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, yeah. Which are they behold glorify God in the day of visitation? Yeah. It says we are living in the last days where being a Christian isn't even popular anymore. Uh -uh. People may try to seem like it is, but to be for real, it's not even. It's not something that everyone rushes to. For living, we are living in a society where being called a virgin is looked at as an insult. Right. People are afraid to tell others that they still pure. They still appear and having their virginity, so they lie to make themselves seem hard. To be accepted, we are living in a generation where nine-year-old children are committing suicide in elementary school bathrooms because they are being stripped of their self-security. We are living in a generation where about 90 million people in America alone are struggling in some type of form with the spirit of homosexuality. We are living in a society where little children are snapped, snatched of their innocence by people, not by people in the world, but by people in the church. So, so this. Oh, okay, you statistics say that this will be the first generation that will not live past their parents. And I don't know about you, but that is a problem to me. Yeah. That, that even the, the children won't be able to live past their parents. Yes. But I believe that the devil is a liar. Yes, because God has shown this generation to do some mighty works. Yes. Amen. In spite of what we are, in spite of our mess ups, God, God has shown this generation to do mighty works in the kingdom. Yes. And the devil knows that, so he's trying his best to get as many young people that he can. Yeah. The devil does not care how old you are. The Come devil on. does not care how young you are. Yeah. He will take you if he has a chance. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So, 
The devil, he knows the power that this generation possess. All right. He knows if he can take and confuse us while we are young, then, we, he, then he has us for the rest of our life. But he will not have our generation without a fight. Amen. The Bible says in Matthew 11 and 12, from the days of John the Baptist until now, that the kingdom of heaven suffered violent and the body taken by force. And I'm taking everything back that the devil has touched. Amen. In the name of Jesus. God truly said it best. He said, I want it all back. I want my families. I want my self-esteem. I want faith in God. Even the ways of God. I want it all back. Amen. He will not have control over God's people. And one thing that I've noticed about this generation is come on, come on. that we really want God. Uh -huh. This generation really wants this generation really wants a relationship with God. But they just don't know how to find him. Come on, come on. They look at all these other ways that are not godly. They look at it in sex, they look at it in, in drugs, they look at it in people, in boyfriends and girlfriends, but you're not you're not gonna find it in that. Come on, you can only find it in God. And I don't care what nobody says, there is no blunt. That is good enough to make me trade in Jesus. Right. Ain't no five-star chick fine enough to make me trade in Jesus. Amen. I have come too far in my walk with God to throw it all the way for a couple of minutes of pleasure. Amen. But God has been too good for me. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus, hallelujah, and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Because if it wasn't for God, I would have lost my mind, hallelujah. If it wasn't for God, I would have killed myself. But God, hallelujah, Jesus. I'm a living witness that God will keep you when you don't want to be kept. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you're just willing to open yourself up to him, he will save you. He will keep you. He will keep you if you're just willing to open yourself up to God. Hallelujah. We can't be scared or embarrassed to express our love for Christ any longer. First Peter 2 and 9 says that he has called us a peculiar people. Yeah, yeah. Webster defines peculiar to be different from the usual or normal. Right. We can't continue to blend in with everyone else. Go ahead, God has specifically chosen this generation. Yeah. He didn't choose us to stay in the same place that we are. There has to be a change in our life. <laughs> we have to live a life that reflects Christ. Because yeah. you may be the only Bible that some people ever, ever will read. Amen. All right, Amen. We have been hiding for way too long behind our age. Uh, too many young people are coming up with the excuse of being too young or too messed up for God to use. All right. But you are the one that he really wants. <laughs> You will never be too young or too messed up for God to use. All right. Just ask Paul. Paul was a murderer of Christians. Right. His main objective was to kill every Christian alive. Yeah. But God chose him in spite of his mess ups. Yeah. God used him to spread the gospel. God would turn a, a murderer into a minister. Yeah. God wants a willing vessel. Somebody who is willing to say yes to God. Yeah. Somebody who is willing to say, God, whatever it takes, I'll do. Right. God, if it means me losing some friends, I don't care. I'll still live for you, God. If it takes me being last yet, I don't care. I'm still going to live for you. It doesn't matter what goes on in my life. I'm still going to live for God. Amen. And another thing that I, I thought about that's a problem with most young Christians is we really haven't fallen in love with God. We, we, we just say we're a Christian because we know it's the right thing to say. We, we just go to church because mama told us to go. But we really don't love God. But see... We have to fall in love with God. Right. We have to fall in love completely with God in every area of our life. Yeah, right. It's just like in a relationship when you got a girlfriend or a boyfriend, you can't wait to be around that person. Come on, come on. You be calling them for no reason, just talking about nothing, but you just want to hear their voice. You will be trying to rush today just so you can see them. And that's the same with same way with God. I can't wait to get into God's presence. If I could, I'd be in this presence all day. I'd be in school just going in turn if I could. Amen. But that's how God, that's how I feel about God. I want everything to be centered on Him. That's why certain things I don't do because I know it'll make Him upset. Some parties I don't go to because I know that it will make Him upset. Some friends I don't hang around because I know that it will make the level of my soul upset. When you fall in love with Jesus and have a real relationship with Him, your whole outlook on life will change. You won't, you won't see it boring to read your Bible or go to church or pray. You will count it a privilege just to be in His presence. 